Hello, and welcome to a quick tutorial on RoughMap files for DCS liveries. This tutorial is based off my DCS custom livery tutorial part 1, so check that out if you feel lost at any point as this tutorial will assume that you already know the basics of livery creation. So what is a RoughMap file? Simply put, a RoughMap file will define the ambient occlusion, roughness, and reflectivity of your textures via the red, green, and blue channels of your exported RoughMap files. Let's look at an example of this before we get started creating the actual rough map. Here I have created three different liveries for the F16, each with isolated examples of the ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic layers. For all of these liveries, the main diffuse texture is set to white. This allows you to see the effects of the different layers in more detail. The channels of the rough map file are in grayscale with 0% being white and 100% being black, and we will see this in more detail when we get to our graphics editor. With all of this in mind, let's look at the ambient occlusion layer. Currently, the other two channels are at 0% to ensure that only the effects of the ambient occlusion layer will be shown. You can view the ambient occlusion layer within the model viewer by pressing F9 or going to the view menu, draw mode, ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion channel of your roughmap file determines how light affects an area from 0 to 100%. You can think of these as baked in shadows and they can be used to really enhance crevices or joining sections on the model. Here you can see the gradient on the tail that goes from 0% at the top to 100% at the base. Now let's turn on our full textures by pressing F1 or going to View, Draw Mode, Default. As you can see here, the white texture now fades to the base, creating the illusion of a shadow at the base of the tail. Let's take a look at the roughness channel now. As with the ambient occlusion layer, the roughness layer also reads from 0% white to 100% black where white is rough and black is smooth. Again, I have added a gradient to the tail with 0% at the top and 100% at the base, and the other channels are set to 0%. You can view the roughness layer by pressing F5 or going to the view, draw mode, roughness. This time you can see that the darker areas are very smooth and are almost reflective. The roughness of your rough mat can drastically change the overall appearance of your texture. I probably spend more time on this channel than any other channel. Finally, let's take a look at the metallic channel, or reflectivity. As with the other channels, it is red from 0% to 100% with white being metallic and black being dielectric. Again, I have set the other channels to 0% so you're only seeing the metallic channel effect. You can view the metallic layer by pressing F6 or once again you could go to the view menu and select metallic. While these are isolated to show the different effects of each channel, when we create the rough map file, they will all be working together as you will see during the creation process. Okay, now we know what a rough map file is and how it will change the look of our overall texture. Let's take a look at how we can make one from an existing texture template. The rough map file will be looking for a red, green, and blue channel. Let's create these by duplicating our diffuse folder three times and naming them red, green, and blue. Now set up the blending properties of each group so that the red group will only show red, green only green, and of course blue only blue. Now we need to tell them to blend together to make one image. Let's set the red and green folder blending mode to screen. As you've probably noticed, there really aren't any changes yet, but you can isolate them if you want to verify that each layer is working properly. Let's go ahead and isolate the red group and work on it first. For this tutorial, I will not be doing a lot of detail work in each of these groups, but instead I will just show you how to get the basic rough map file created. And then you can customize it from there. As we discussed earlier, this will be the ambient occlusion map of our roughmap file. You can pull out the channels tab if you want to isolate the red channel so that you can see the image in grayscale. Being we know that this channel is going to give us the baked in shadows, we're going to want most of this layer to be white, which means there really won't be any baked in shadows. We can achieve this with adjustment layers. Let's add a levels adjustment layer to the very top of the group so that it is affecting everything below it. In some cases, you may have multiple adjustment layers throughout your group in order to get the exact look you are going for, but for now, this will work for us. Adjust the levels until your image is mostly white. As you can see, we are not really getting what we want because the tail art and weathering is messing with the image. Let's hide those and see how it looks.
Of course, you can take this much, much further, but for now, this will do. Now let's hide the red group and show the green group. This group is going to take a bit more work than the red channel. First, we'll add the levels adjustment as we did before, but this time we are also going to add an invert adjustment along with it. This will allow us to get much closer to the look we want without a bunch of unnecessary adjustments. Now you can see we also need to address the tail art. As it is now, it wouldn't come out right. Let's merge the tail art group together and put a color overlay on it. This should give the area of the artwork a more realistic look. Sometimes you'll have to play around with things like this depending on the look you are going for. By no means is this the definitive way to do it, but that's the beauty of custom livery creation. You can create the look that you want. There's a lot more you can do with this channel to get some unique looks to your overall texture. However, for now, we're going to call this good. That's two down and one to go. Let's hide the green group and show the blue group. Again, we are going to add a levels and invert adjustment to this group. Adjust the levels properties to get the majority of the texture to be black. This time, let's move the adjustments below the metals folder as we don't want to invert or modify these. The metals on top of the adjustment layer should be fine how they are and give a nice metallic look on the texture. Looking at this, again, we don't want the weathering effects or tell art, so let's hide them. And believe it or not, you now have created a very basic rough met file. Once done, enable all groups and see what our combined rough met is looking like. Now, let's export it as a rough map, update our description file so that it uses it, and take a look at it in the model viewer. When you are exporting your files, be sure to add the underscore rough map to the file name so that you don't override your diffuse textures. Here in the model viewer, again, we can toggle through the layers with F1 for default, F5 for roughness, F9 for ambient occlusion, and F6 for metallic. As you can see, the red, green, and blue channels are all affecting the model. Now we need to generate rough map files for all of the other texture template files that we have. Let's open up another one and we'll work on that one together as well. Again, we will duplicate the diffuse group three times and name them red, green, and blue. Ensure that the blending modes are set properly, then set your red and green channels to screen. Hide any other layer so they don't interfere with your red, green, and blue groups, and let's start adding some adjustment layers. For this one, I'm going to just copy the ones from the file I already did to save some time. With this file, you can see that the paint job is interfering with our overall look. Let's hide the dark paint layer so that we have a more uniform look. Let's also hide some of the other things we don't want on our ambient occlusion layer. Now we need to repeat the process for the green and blue channel. Again, I will copy the adjustment layers from the first file we created. We will continue to do this for all of our template files until we have a rough map file for each template. Once all rough map files have been completed, export them out to our custom livery folder. Again, be sure to add the underscore rough map to the file name when exporting. When done, update the description file so that it will use all the rough mats we have created. Once that is done, we can reload the model viewer and ensure that all of our rough mats are being applied using the different view modes. And with that, you should have a good basic understanding of rough mat files. Be sure to experiment with adjustment layers and even try out ones I didn't cover here to add a bit more depth to your rough mat. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.